All right, in this lesson, we're gonna look at the effective interest method for a bond premium. So we are looking at amortizing the interest over the useful life of the bond or the yeah, useful life of the bond, but we're gonna use the effective interest method instead of the straight line. Now, the effective interest method is a little bit more complicated because we're actually gonna to have to calculate using an effective interest rate, the amount of interest that we are going to charge. And that interest is going to change every single year. And I'll show you that in an amortization table. So the key thing about going through this lesson is just understanding the mechanics of it. I wouldn't say, you know, you should be, you know, really good at doing it when you're done with this lesson, but just understand the mechanics of how we get the interest paid versus the interest expense and how that interest expense is going to change over time. So let's get started here with the effective interest method using the uh, bond premium. So an overview here. Now this method takes the bond premium and allocates it based on an effective interest. So we're going to need an effective interest rate to calculate the interest expense. Now the key idea is that a dollar today is not the same as a dollar tomorrow and therefore we need to think about the time value of money effect rather than each period having the same interest. So this method is often linked to longer term rather than shorter term bonds because of the difference between the time value of money. All right. So what are we trying to do here? Well, again, what we're doing here is we sold these bonds at a premium. So in this case on your screen, 105,450, but it, we only are required to pay back a hundred thousand dollars. So the difference of 5,450 has to be allocated over the life of the uh, bond and we're basically paying back money that the bond sharehold uh, bond holders had paid us originally so we're paying back their money as a way to reduce the interest expense now this right here is basically a straight line right you see a straight line we're allocating it even evenly what we're going to be doing in this lesson is more something like this okay something to that effect. So we're not gonna flatten that straight line, we're actually gonna dip that straight line as we get to the ending carrying value. So because of that, we have to use some other method to calculating how much interest expense we are allocating to this period, all right? So again, just high level, what are we trying to do here? Well, we're gonna have this interest paid, the interest paid is gonna be based on the face value of the bond and the stated interest rate on the bond. So we take those two, multiply them together, that would be the interest paid. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the effective interest or the interest expense. The interest expense, we're gonna take the carrying value, so not the bond's face value, we're gonna take the carrying value and multiply it by the effective interest rate. That's gonna give us our interest expense and it will be lower than the interest paid. Why? Because we're gonna take some of that money that we got in the front end from that premium and pay it back to those bond holders. So let's take a look at some mechanics here. We'll be using the bond's carrying value and the effective interest rate to calculate interest expense. So that's a little bit different than what we've been doing before. And then we'll be using the bond's face value and stated interest rate to calculate the amount of interest paid. So this is how we calculate interest paid this is how we calculate interest expense. And that's the real difference in this method and the straight line method. So here's our example to walk you through. Company A received $316,065 for a 9% bond issued on January 1, 20X1 at a market interest rate of 6.5%. So what they're saying here is that the market interest rate is 6.5%, but the bond's stated rate is 9%. So a Effectively, if you are an investor of this bond, you're not getting 9.5% overall, you're gonna get 6.5%. Why? Because you have to pay more than the bond's really worth. How much more? It looks like $16,065. Or actually, no, strike that. You are paying $56,065 because the face value of the bond is 260. Sorry, I just thought it would be a round number. But 
It isn't. So um, stated that interest will be paid each December 31st and stated that they mature in 10 years. So this is an instance where we're not paying every six months, we're gonna pay once a year. Assume company A uses the effective interest method to amortize the bond premium, prepare the journal entries to record the bond issuance and the first interest payment on December 31st. So what do we have here? Well, we have the carrying value of 316.65, the face value of 260. So the premium is going to be $56,065. So we need to allocate this over time. The problem is we're not using the straight line. So I can't just divide this by 10 to get $5,606.50. So we can't do it that way. We've got to use some other method. Why? Because this is a 10 year bond. It's a long bond, 10 years at a 6.5%, there is a big difference there, okay? So let's kind of walk you through what we would have done when we issued these bonds. And when we issued these bonds, we would have debited cash in the amount of 316.065. Then we would have issued a bonds payable as a liability, bonds payable as a credit in the amount of $260,000. The difference, the 56065 is going to go into premium on bonds payable. So sorry, I just abbreviated there, but bonds payable, that is what we're going to put into that premium. And then we're going to use that as part of the repayment of the interest. So that's the that's what happens when we issue the bonds. Now we need to calculate what happens at the very end of the first year when we have to calculate the interest expense and the interest payable. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing that we gotta figure out is how much interest payable do we have? So to calculate interest payable, we're going to need the face value of the bond, multiplying that by the stated interest rate. So the face value is 260, so 260, and we're going to multiply that by the bond stated rate. So in this case, it's 9.5%. And we would normally do times, so 12 over 12, but I would have just done one. So in that case, 260 times 9.5% times 12 over 12 gives you $24,700. So we've got $24,700 of interest payable. That's what we owe to our bond holders. Now the question here is, what's our interest expense? So the interest expense, we're gonna need the carrying value and we're gonna multiply it by the market interest rate. So in this case, the carrying value, since we just are starting to make the first payment here, the carrying value is what we actually got for it when we first issued it. So when we got for it was 316, 065, and we're going to multiply this by 6.5% times time of 12 over 12, and that's going to give us 20,544. Notice that the interest expense is lower than the interest payable, which is what we would expect, right? So interest payable is here, and then we're gonna use some of their money to pay down that interest payable. So our expense, the actual cash outflow from us is gonna be lower than that. So that's what we have here. So what is going to be the reduction in the premium on bonds payable? The reduction is gonna be the difference between the two. So 24,700 minus 20,000 544 gives us 4,156 dollars. So that's going to be what we're going to reduce the bond premium on bonds payable. Remember, we said that the premium on bonds payable is 56,065. We're going to reduce it by 4,156, and by reducing it our carrying value also gets reduced as well. So now that we have all of our numbers that we need, let's look at the journal entry. So the journal entry is the same as the straight line. So we're gonna debit interest expense in the amount of 20,544. We know that we're gonna to have to pay uh, 24,700, so we're gonna credit cash 
24,700. And now we have a difference. We have a debit difference, 4,156. And that's going to be premium on bonds payable. Now, if you remember earlier, we premium on bonds payable, we credited 56,065. So now we're going to debit 41.56 to get some balance below that. I, to be really honest, I don't know what that is unless I got a calculator and I don't got a calculator. So it would be something like 52, 51, 9, 11. Sure, 51.911. So now our premium goes down and that is gonna help us calculate next year's interest expense because we're going to take that and add it to the bonds payable which would be 260,000 so we would get 311,911 we're going to multiply that by the six and a half percent to get the new interest expense so we need to do this analysis in order to calculate interest expense going forward okay so let me show you kind of the long amortization table to show you what I mean. So this is what the amortization, amortization table is going to look like for the interest. So in year one, notice that we had a premium on bonds payable of 56065. We had a bonds payable of 260. So the carrying value of that bond is 316065. To get our interest payment, we just take that 260,000 and multiply it by the stated rate of 9%. And we get 24,700. That stays consistent because that's what the bond says it's going to pay 24,700. So if you notice down the line, we get 24,700. Then the interest amount. How do we calculate the interest? We need the carrying value, multiply it by the market interest rate of 6.5%. So you notice we got 20,540. And then the amortization is the difference, the 4,156. That reduces my premium, so that reduces my premium of 56,000 to 51,909. So it was off by two bucks here. Okay, notice that my carrying value then goes down to 311. Why? Because I've paid 4,000 more, so now I have less of their money. So it goes down to 311,909. And again, when I multiply this right here by 6%, I get 20,274. Um, and then my amortization on bond becomes greater, 4,426. And it, we keep on going till we get to the very end. Now down here, notice that we've got a difference here. Um, and that's because of a rounding error. So you'll see that we do have a difference because I rounded, um, but usually those two numbers should be the same and usually are the same. So that's how we do it. Again, mechanically, all we're doing is we're recalculating the carrying value right here. And then we're multiplying it by 6.5% to get to interest amount. And then the difference between what we paid and the interest expense would be the premium amortization. So that's what that looks like. I know it's now a complete mess, but hopefully you kind of understand that. And if not, I would definitely screenshot this and kind of just understand how the calculations work. Because I think if you get that, you'll understand how the effective interest works. Okay. So again, you need to know the face value of the bond and the stated interest rate, but you also need to know the carrying value and the effective interest rate to calculate that interest expense. So hope you enjoyed this lesson. I know it was a long one and I know it's probably a little bit confusing, but that's how the effective interest method works. It is a little confusing, but if you do it step by step or just put the table together and then kind of do your calculations, you'll have this down pat. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.